Hey guys, Brendan from TAP. Um, today I just want to show you how to do an injector um, return leak test on this ZD30 Common Rail Patrol. Quite a common test that you'll do on, on Common Rail Diesels um, is the injector return leak test. So um, in this case we've got a ZD30 Patrol um, Common Rail that they've got a complaint of a um, long crank intermittently. So I'll show you what I've got hooked up and um, you know, the things that I go through before I get to doing the injector bottle test and um, we'll look at the results. So one of the first things you're going to want to do with a, a common rail complaint like this of long crank is hook up some clear hose. So I've got that going from the fuel filter to the fuel pump itself. Um, idea being if we had some kind of leak in the vacuum feed system up to the pump um, as the car sits that's going to give it a chance to um, have the fuel revert back to the tank and you're going to have to suck that up. So we want to leave it sit and make sure this stays full of diesel and then also while it's running you, know, you can easily do the test of seeing that there's no air bubbles in there. So we're happy with that. Um, another common thing that can cause a long crank on these that um, we've already done the video on is the relief valve down in the rail that lives underneath of there. But a first and easier test to get to on these that is definitely well worth it for a long crank um, particularly on these Bosch systems like this run, so that includes your, your Ranger and, and many other cars, is a bottle test. So we've got some um, bottles here, many different kits. So we've just got four hoses going from these individual containers um, down to, I'll grab you a light quickly. Down to each of the injectors and we've just taken the return hose off. So I'm gonna get you set up. So this is our um, rail, if you like, that um, controls the return flow from the injectors. So I've got that disconnected from each injector. It's just a little kip, clip, pop them out. And then I, I block off the fittings there just so we're not sucking air in through it. Um, then we just fit a fitting onto the top of each injector. If I grab the kit to show you. So this is the specific kit that I'm using. It's just got a, a bunch of different adapters in there that go into different injectors. Um, a blue point kit, if anyone's wondering, but there's many other ones out there. So I'm gonna start this car now, and we're going to watch um, the rate that those bottles fill up. So not too bad a crank there, but um, you know, I'd say slightly if, if we're splitting hairs long, but um, intermittent he says, so it does get quite bad. And we can see we've got one injector much worse than the others, so follow that down and it's fill, managed to fill the hose and fill its bottle. Whereas you can see, say for instance, this one over here, the others have barely made it you know, a quarter way up their tube. So we have an extreme return leak from that injector. Now that's going to be bleeding off a bunch of um, fuel while it's trying to build rail pressure so I'm confident that's going to be our problem um, for a long crank. It tends to get worse when they get hot because the viscosity of the diesel changes and, and it leaks even worse. So um, this will need an, an injector, um, 200,000 Ks on it so I'm going to recommend he does a whole set on it. So that's a common basic test that you'll do on um, a lot of common rail diesels, particularly if you get a long crank complaint like this and particularly if it's a Bosch system being a common failure mode of them. Um, aside from this extreme example, which you know, took 15 seconds or so and is already overflowing one, um, generally you'll see not more than much of a trickle coming out of each injector and we're looking for balance, right? So after a minute or so of running, you know, the bottles will just be starting to creep up a bit. It takes a while to fill the actual lines. Um, just starting to creep up and we want to get to about you know, half, three quarter bottle or so, that, so we've got a good sample size there. And you shouldn't see much difference between them. So you know, anything from Treat it just like a compression test, really. You know, I like generic type things. There will be specs for specific vehicles, and if you can get them, great. But as we know, it can be hard. So treat it like a compression test. We don't want to see much more than, say, 10, 15% variance between them, um, or else that can give you reason to say, look, depending on your symptoms, you may want to take these out and put them on a bench test, or depending how far the variance is. So hopefully that helps you out, guys. Um, for more tricks, tips, that kind of thing, get on to www.tat.net.au. Um, we've got a video section there with all kinds of, of tests like this right through to you know, programming using J2534. So check it out, and um, we'll see you next time. Thank you.